Hey everybody, welcome back to the Global Games. Of course, we are doing some Hearthstone action here. My name is Gaskin and I've got Falcone with me now. Can I see your fidget spinner, Dan? I mean, I don't know what that means, but there it is. It's there. You can have a little play with it if you really want. So, next game today is Austria versus Peru. Now, a very important one, as all are the games today. Uh, but very important implications. Let's have a look at the group and see how it's standing at the moment. So Greece and Ukraine both already through because they have a 2-1 match record. However, there is still a chance that Austria could push one of them down to third and qualify in top two themselves. No way, unfortunately, for Peru to qualify, regardless if they were to win 3-0. So it's all on Austria here. Yeah, so I had a quick chat with Game King just before, just while you guys were casting the last game, and he seemed to think that as long as they don't get 3-0'd, he thinks they're going to have a good chance of getting through regardless. I don't know if that's what our maths have, have, have reached. Either. What, Austria? Yeah. Uh, so if Austria were to lose 3-0, then their tiebreaker would be minus 2. Yeah. And as we've been looking at so far in the group, Taiwan and Argentina are at minus one. So actually, that math may not pay out. Right. It's a really tough one. Taiwan and Argentina, there. that's where the border is at the moment. So His words were, if we win one game, that should be enough for us. One game is better. Right. Being at minus one is certainly a better situation. But hopefully, we can see more than one game won. And maybe even go to a game five here between Peru and Austria. As you can see, the lineups there. Game King, Wife Coach, Sikintek, and Johnny Stone going up against uh, the, the likes of Peru as well. And it's been a shame for Peru, this, this group, because they're at zero and two. They obviously qualified from phase one, and we were thinking they were going to be able to show us what they were made of, but they've, they've kind of fallen short in this group. Yeah, I and mean, they had an incredible climb to get through to stage two. Um, it's a little bit disappointing for them. We've got two very different approaches coming from the guys, because I also spoke to, to Kishtar earlier, and he said that they're here today to have fun. They're here to have 100% fun. They want to have a relaxed approach. He, he spoke to the other players who, who have apparently tilted a bit in the past, and he said to them, look, Today we just relaxed. We can't get through anyway. Let's just enjoy ourselves. But then Game King spoke to him, and he said to me, "Yeah, we need to win today. There's no, we got no, we got no special tricks up the sleeve. We got nothing exciting planned. We're just going to win." And that is, uh, it can be dangerous if you're going up against a wild card team that is going to be playing something a little bit different. They've got the surprise factor. Early today, they was hungry, right? We've seen it happen already. So. Let's have a look at the classes that are going to be played by both of these sides. First game is going to be Hunter versus Rogue. Of course, it is a best of five matchup, and it, all of the classes are brought, but you get to pick between one of the two classes. It is a blind pick, so you don't know what your opponent is playing, of course, except the two classes that they have selected. Yeah, and so it's going to be Zegan Target versus Nandeep up first. The Ash Team Austria are going to be try-harding this. They need to win, and... Peru, we could see some weird things again, like we did with Hungary, like we've seen a little bit from in the previous series too. Was it was it Tice that brought the warrior? Yep, Tice with control warrior there. And Austria, again, have all gathered. Of course they have, yeah. Of course, they, they get together as a team, and we saw them last week uh, high-fiving when they were winning their games, and why not? They, they put themselves in a situation today where I believe if they were to lose 3-2, they would definitely be through. That's the, their ideal world uh, if they were to lose. But of course, winning just makes everything a lot better. It really adds an extra level to me when they are playing together. They oh, gather yeah. together because you don't just see the players' reactions. You see the players' reactions and then their interactions with each other. You see them, you know, when someone maybe makes a mistake or has a silly suggestion, you see the kind of facial expressions of that person and their team when they realize and stuff like that. So I, I really do enjoy watching them all playing together as we've got Zig and Tig up first with the Hunter and Quest Rogue from Nandeeb. No no wild card deck here, it looks like. No, we're not gonna see uh, the the aggro quest rogue that we uh, aggro the aggro rogue that we saw in that previous game. But something a little bit different from Austria here, going for the hunter. I mean the hunter we've We've seen a little bit of throughout the global games, but it's not been popping up every single week. A little bit of is exactly how I'd describe it too. As I said, over the last couple of weeks, Hunter has been the second least picked class, only just behind Warlock. Um, so definitely not the favorite. No. Not a great start for Austria here either. They need to well, they did. It's too late. They needed to pick up a one drop in turn one. That's how Hunter work. If Hunter get the alley cat into scavenging hyena, they tend to just be able to win games off of the back of that. But two eagle horn bows is not what Zeke and Tag wants. Of course, Hunter does do very well against Quest Rogue, and that may be why we've seen this Hunter pick. Yeah. If they were looking at, 
it being Rogue or Druid, and they were saying, actually, well, what does well against both of them? Hunter does pretty well yeah. against both of them. If it was going to be a J Druid, then exactly. it means we've got a good chance. If, if, if Ziggentarg's Druid was a J Druid, which we expect it was, you, you usually pair the more controly deck with the more aggressive deck, then that's much weaker against the Rogue, much weaker against the Quest Rogue. So it makes a lot of sense that, that if they pick that, Prue going to go ahead and drop Igneous Elemental. Looks to me like they've got everything they need to complete the quest very, very soon. They, they need to play the quest. They do need to play the quest, but I like this approach, actually, just getting some board control and uh, realizing where they actually lose this game. And they lose this game from up too much board control from their opponent, uh, just being overrun and too quickly their life total being chipped away at. So they're just now threatening a board presence of their own, and Austria's game plan is, well, the face. face is the place. But I really like this from Peru as well, because they've also acknowledged how they're going to complete the quest. They've 100% got that covered. They complete the quest with flame elementals. Not fireflies, not igneous elementals, not anything else. They're completing this quest with flame elementals. So as long as that igneous elemental gets destroyed in the next couple of turns, it will just happen. So Ziggenturg is going to have to try not to put anything too big on the board. He doesn't want to allow Nandib to suicide the Ignis Elemental. Scavenging Hyena, again, something that Ziggenturg could have done with earlier following a one drop. But the curve just hasn't worked out for him this game. Like, like he's looking around, he's shrugging. He's like, what, what's happened here? I'm playing Hunter. This isn't how you play Hunter. Yeah, being behind on the board against Quest Rogue is never going to be fun. And if he does just choose to continue to ignore everything that's on the board. I mean, you could play Hungry Crab plus Unleash the Hounds if you wanted to, put four damage to face with the the Hounds, but it's a risky game to play because as soon as there is something that Igneous Elemental can trade into, then that quest is going to be completed. And yeah. Certainly all those 1-1s one are going to be 5-5s. Five it also kind of feels like you'd like to save the Hounds for a Scavenging Hyena turn. <laughs> Ideally, you wait until turn 10, you play, um, you play the Kodo that gives everything charge, and then you play Unleash the Hounds, and then you charge with the Hyena that's got a million attack all of a sudden. Tundra Rhino, not the Kodo. I'm glad you got there. Yeah, I got there. I did. I was just about to say. I was really struggling. But... And Austria just not able to play anything. They couldn't even play the Kindly Grandmother, because that would have allowed Peru to trade into it with one of their Flame Elementals. <laughs> and then, of course, use the Igneous Element. Igneous Elemental. And at the moment, Peru can just supply a beatdown here. It's and they just, say, you want to have a race? It's just hilarious that they've dealt more damage than the Hunter have with their board full of minions that have one attack. Like, Austria needs to do something. But this is not a hand that's going to allow them to do anything. They'd love an explosive trap right about now. Imagine how good that would be. Yeah, but it's not really been seen very often in current Hunter no. decks, Explosive Trap, of course. And it looks like Zikandeg is just playing <laughs> the route of, well, I'm going to ignore everything and hope I can win this race. Unfortunately, I don't know if this is a race okay. he can win. So Unleash the Hound is a lot of burst damage later. At this rate, it's going to be seven burst damage. Okay, one has to trade into the Torn, but that's still six damage. So even this turn, say Unleash the Hound is six damage, the weapon is another three, the hero power is another two, that's 11. We're only six off, we're getting there. You are, but you've also got to be worried about your own life total as well. That's the scary factor. It that does mean we've got Hungry Crab being a possibility here for Zeke and Turkey. He can, of course, take out that taunt if he wants. Yeah, but then it buffs the Hungry Crab so that the Igneous Elemental can trade into it. Yeah. It's weird. Zeke and has to play this game where he doesn't put any minions that have three attack on the board. I, the more I think about it, the more I just don't think I mind Unleash the Hound. Yeah, you trade one into the taunt, you push the other six face, hero power, you play the Alley Cat if you trade a second one in, if you want to just keep a board as wide as possible. That way, the Ignis Elemental, as far as Austria are concerned, the Ignis Elemental cannot suicide in. However, Peru can backstab the Ignis Elemental, then trade it into a Hound. I don't know if they'd want to go that far, though. I would. Yeah? Yeah, just complete the quest. Yeah, wouldn't be able to activate the next turn. That's the only problem, because you have to spend the two mana to play the two Flame Elementals. And on six, that puts you down to four. Yeah, preparation off the top would, of course, be massive for them. Yeah. And how much damage is available then for for Peru here? Oh, okay. Is Zingtar going to trade the 1-1 one, one into the 2-1 there just to... Uh... I think that's because they're worried about how much damage is potentially available. And also, it doesn't make a huge difference. As I said earlier, he can then play the Alley Cat to just fill up the board one more time. There's a Shadow Step. It's still not quite enough, is it? Actually, yeah, if he backstabs the um, Ignis Elemental, trades it in, 
then um, plays, plays one, one flame Shadow elemental. Shadow steps plays one, then Amazing. he completes the quest, and then he can just win the game, right? Yeah, that's just lethal. Does he see it is the real question. I'm just glad we saw it, Dan. That's worrying if he's going to play the deck hand. Just double, let's just double check this. This is lethal. There's been two flame elementals played. Backstab the Igneous, trade it in, play one. That's the third. Shadow step it, play that. That's the fourth. Complete the quest. I make that 20 damage. 21 if you 21. your face as well. And I think Peru may be onto it as well. It's a good start. It was a good game plan from Austria. They they just they noticed where their weakness lied. But unfortunately, the shadow step off the top was absolutely massive now for Peru. And that backstab being included shows why people are putting backstab back in. That's not even to backstab your opponents, minions. Nope. It's to backstab your own. Get rid of that Igneous Elemental that just gets ignored sometimes. Peru going 1-0 up. Yeah, it has to be said, Austria's hand was just so lacking all the way through. They would they wanted to curve out with a one drop first into a two drop and then get going. They were never able to get that good start. And then because they didn't want the Igneous Elemental to die, they were never able to develop a board full stop. It meant they were never able to deal with Peru's boards and they were just set up for failure. Set up for failure. And now they're 1-0 down. And now it's fact time. So, oh, no. facts about Austria. Here I mean, we course, go again. Austria has some famous figures that you might know of. Uh, Mozart from Austria. Game King. Sigmund Freud from, uh, from Austria. Arnold Schwarzenegger from Austria. Johnny Stone yeah. from Austria as well. Th people that have just changed our lives for the better, to be honest, Dan. Especially Johnny Stone. Especially Johnny Stone and his crazy decks. Who is up next? He is up next. Let's have a look at the matchup <laughs> and see what decks are going to be played, or at least what class is at first. Johnny Stone versus Kishtar, and it is going to be Shaman versus Warrior here. Dan, now, it wouldn't be a fact, if it, a fact day if I didn't include Peru as well. Okay, Peru fact coming up. All right, so mashed potatoes, chips, french fries, whatever you want to call it. Do you like them? Yeah. Thank Peru for that. They introduced the potatoes to our lives. They introduced the potato. Yeah, that's where uh, potato was first domesticated, was in Peru. Oh. Yeah. And then they brought it to Europe, and now potatoes are sold worldwide. Especially in the UK. Fish and chips, right? Yeah, we love our good fish and chips. So there you go. You can thank Peru for that. So game two is going to be Shaman versus Warrior, Johnny Stone versus Kishtar. Now, you said that you were speaking to Game King before, and he was saying, oh, we think if we lose 3-0, we're still through. Well... They can lose 3-0 and no, still no, no, finish no, no. third. He, he was saying 3-1. Saying okay, 3-1, it's, it's icky. If they lose 3-2, then they're definitely through. 100%, because they would be on zero, and we've already seen a couple of teams finish minus one and yeah. five minus two. But they don't want to go there. You want to make sure you win. You want to go through with a bang. Yeah, no, Game King was saying to me they definitely need to win at least one game, and they yeah. think then they're safe. They said if, they should go through as third. If they do lose three, then that does mean they'd be tied with Peru, but actually their tiebreakers are better than Peru, so they right. would still be in that third place spot and have a better chance, but... Oh, fast game coming up, though. It's going to be the Evolve Shaman versus the Pirate Warrior. Now, I just want to point out, I love Kishtar's background. He's, he's, the, he's the streamer of Team Peru. Mm -hmm. um, pretty big, big, not... Big, big, but big as in famous guy over there. Okay. I just said the word big a lot of times in that sentence. You did. Um, his background changed dramatically at some point. It looks like he, he's upgraded his streaming room, got the sound things in the background. I know, just, I find it very aesthetically pleasing. Do you know how you designate where you put the soundproofing squares? Uh, I don't. I've just covered my wall with Yeah, because like most of the times when I see soundproofing, it's like all over the place, but then you also see it sometimes like quite sporadically and... Do you just like knock on the wall and find which is the most sensitive area and then put it there? My wall in my studio is just literally covered in them. Yeah. Maybe we'll ask him. Who knows? But either way, someone's in charge and it is Patches. And we are going to have just a big old race here. And it is a race that Pirate Warrior can win if it can get the early control. However, there is usually good answers from the Evolved Shaman. Yeah, I say it every week when we get a matchup like this. I think the Evolved Shaman is a slight favorite just because they have the ability to go so wide so easily. It means they can make more effective trades against the Pirate Warrior. And then as long as they can get some taunts to block the weapons, they're usually in a pretty good position. One thing that the Evolved Shaman can do is just hero power each turn and potentially get a taunt, which means potentially block five, six, maybe even seven damage. And in... This match, historically, we've seen sometimes you save the Blood Cell 
just to try and eliminate something like an Arcanite Reaper and to get real value. In this situation, Johnny Stone, though, needs to just get on the board and compete with it as early as possible. So he's never going to save it, but there is, of course, a second one in his deck that he might be able to use later to get a lot of value. But look at all these upgrades. Well, we're in that awkward position again where there's no weapon. You want to upgrade a Fiery War Axe. You want to upgrade an Arcanite Reaper. Oh, oh. A pirate warrior that upgrades a fiery war axe on turn three and then just keeps going with it just wins the game i've seen situations where by turn seven there's a seven attack fiery war axe that's already hit the face five times it, they can do some crazy things but the, the war axe is an important ingredient do you know why this matchup is tough for pirate warrior though right. because of think from below it's because you have a it one in four help. to roll a taunt every turn yeah. as well and that can get very frustrating when you run out of minions and you do just have, like, I don't know, a 7-2 Arcanite Reaper equipped because you've upgraded it a few times and, and then smacked it into space. The way, yeah. yeah, and then suddenly you've got no way to get rid of it. And that can be very frustrating. Frothing Berserker, pretty nice to have for Peru here. Kristal didn't look too happy just a moment ago. I'd like to hear what he was saying to his teammates, but Frothing Berserker hit the weapon in. Just, just seems fine to me. It does, and the fact that you're going first as well on turn three is great because it's not like you're going second and then you are going into a potential Jade Lightning turn. And the coin's already been used from Austria, yep. so Jade Lightning just not going to be a factor. Now you're going to get some guaranteed damage out of this Frothing Berserker, but it may need to be used to kill off a Primal Fin Totem because I think that's the, the go-to potentially here for, for Johnny Stone. Of course, it's not the only play. You could just play Firefly plus Flame Elemental as well try and go a little bit wider with the board. But Fr Primal Fin Totem may work as a bit of a taunt, saying you can't just leave this on the board. That's one of the best things about the card, isn't it? That they can't just leave it on the board. Leave it on the board and then Flame Tongue Totem just becomes game-breakingly strong. I'm gonna go with the two Flame Elementals, so uh, deciding to actually put more stats on the board immediately. I don't mind this too much, but Corcoran Elite, Really nice pickup for Peru here, because he can just trade one in, may maybe go face with the Frothing Berserker, maybe even trade that in too, and just end the turn with a very nice board. Double upgrade works as well. It feels so bad using the upgrades on nothing. Both upgrades, in fact. But it does get you the kill and does also present you pr present you with a very nice wide board. Yeah, that's the thing. You just need to keep ahead here in this situation. You can't afford to go behind at any point. So if you do fall behind, then that's when the thing from below is and the taunt totems just get too much of a nuisance. At least you keep the game in your hands at this point. Of course, Jade Lightning was, well, really the only option there for Austria. It does stem a little bit of this damage and gets them back ahead on board. Kishtar yeah. slowly running out of things to do as well. This is going to be an important draw, of course, <laughs> as it always is. But when you're starting to run out of cards, you really need to find something significant that's been able to swing it back into your favor. It does look at the moment like it's down to the core Corona League just to carry this game. It's not enough. Salty Captain is no good with no other pirates in the hand either. We are way past the patches days in this game. So there's no crazy swing coming. Maybe a... Blood Cell Cultist oh, next turn Jade would fit. Lightning. Yeah, Jade Lightning's not nice. Maybe Blood Cell Cultist next turn would fit the curve nicely for Peru. He could play that with the captain. It gets a buff. The weapon gets a buff. Everybody wins. <sighs> but that's very specific. Deckhand. That's not bad. Yeah, Deckhand with uh, South Sea Captain, of course, can provide a little bit more damage. But more importantly, allows you to trade because you may have to now in this situation for Kishtar. You may have to trade your deckhand into the 3-3, three, three, use your face to trade into the 1-2, and then just keep a South Sea Captain on the board. As your beat stick. You have a nice 3-3 three, three beat stick that's going to just stick around, hopefully. But there are so many tools in Johnny Stone's deck that he can use to deal with it. Both Primal Fin Totems are still sitting there, ready to go. Johnny Stone could just drop both next turn. Drop both Hero Power, spit out a 1-1 one, one from each Totem. How, how does Peru ever deal with a board that's that wide? The thing there, Life Total is still decent, but they're now out of cards, and this is looking like a good spot for Austria. As you said, Primal Fin Totem means Primal Fin Totem is going to be fantastic. You've got a Devolve there later as well if these pirates get a little bit too much of a nuisance. Or if anything builds up too big, if a Frothing Berserker comes down, for example, Devolve is such a good tool. He could consider the Devolve this turn just to uh, prevent 
a Blood Cell Cultist coming down and buffing the, buffing the weapon next turn. That's something I would have considered on Austria's side, but obviously Johnny Stone, as as you did, decided it's better to just hold on to it. Okay. How can I Reaper? Hang All right. Like, this Th changes things. Yeah, that's a big pickup because now you can just push eight damage to face if you really want. Ah, right. Okay. Well, now it's a hard decision. Let's do some maths here because you can push five damage and conserve the Arcanite Reaper. What? Start no. swinging with that next turn. But you'd still need two extra damage over the next two turns to win. I think that might end up be being better than swinging eight this turn. Yeah, I, I think he needs to, to hit, hit with the weapon. Hit face with the weapon. Ideally, these 1-1s one clog up the board and prevent Johnny Stone from ever developing a taunt totem. He's going to go for it now. Yeah, you start pushing this damage. Oh, okay. Because I, if I, you draw into fine. a mortal strike... Any of the four attack things, which there are so many. If you're right, that ends up being better. And now this is the point where I was talking about Austria and where those taunts are going to be coming in handy. Mm. Really want to roll a taunt here. Bloodlust is not going to be able to get lethal for you this turn. Maelstrom Portal gives you an extra small chance for a taunt. You can get yeah. a Goldshire Footman, a Shield Bearer, something like that. And a, a roll like that would just be game winning here. It's something that you need to take. I think you both need to you need to Maelstrom Portal and Hero Power here to get your best chances of finding a taunt. But yeah, the problem is, again, it's these Primal Fin Totems. They're taking up so much space on the board. Even if Drain Stone trades in those Murlocs, the Totems respawn the Murlocs at the end of the turn. And then there won't be space for Austria to roll again, I was going to say, but there is a Taunt Totem. Doesn't need to worry about that anymore. That Taunt Totem coming right on time, and that's quite exactly what I said earlier. They're so pesky, that one in four. Maelstrom still happens here. He needs to clear up the 3-3. Three -three. And that is going to be so frustrating now for Peru, where this five damage is just going to have to sit and wait. Either that, or they have to just suck it up now, and, well, okay, the green skin will change that. You, of course, then just kill off this Taunt Totem. Now, it's not quite going to be lethal from Johnny Stone coming in next turn. It's going to be 18, 20 damage versus the 27 health that Kishtar has. This is because although Johnny Stone has a wide board of six minions, and although he has Bloodlust, he actually only has two attack represented on the board, which is a um, pretty low number. Austria going to try and get another Taunt Totem right now. It seems quite important. <laughs> it seems pretty important. In fact, they may need to Bloodlust and get rid of this 5-4. I think they do have to. Yeah, you can't allow the 5... You can't allow anything to be on the board that can trade into your potential Taunt as well. Trading you can draw. Very good. You want to find a thing from below? Ooh, okay. Uh, well, the Taunt possibility there is pretty high, right? You can get it yourself is. a Pompous Thespian. But you do it before you roll if you're going to do that. Right, you'd, okay. you'd rather go if you're going to use the evolve to look for a taunt, and then you take the one in four afterwards. You take the one in four afterwards oh. rather than before. Oh, okay. Or you do this: you take the one in three. If you miss, then you evolve. Because it's, it, I think it's a slightly higher chance overall this way. Let's see. You think? You, I think you have to evolve here. You have to just hope for a taunt. No taunt found, so now we just need any form of damage for Peru. That's not damage, though. It's still not going to be lethal on the other side, though. It's not. But how scared of you are, are you of Bloodlust? Mm, you've seen one which was used out of necessity. I, d I mean, it, it doesn't matter at this point, right? You just go face armor up and hope for the best. What now? Yeah, because even if you were to... Yeah, I mean, you have to go face here. Yeah. You Only... use the damage where you still can, whilst there's no taunt. The only win conditions now, though, are the Heroic Strikes, the Mortal Strikes. Uh, a second Corcoran Elite, I believe, should still be in the deck. But I think that's it. Deck Hand won't do the job because there's no weapon. Nazoth's first mate. There's obviously only one damage. We need three. So do you... Uh, I think you may play the Manatoi Totem as well. Of course, you could play... You, you need to hear a power. You need to try and find a Taunt straight off. Because you want that. But do you play the Manatoi Totem with you giving yourself a more of a chance to find that thing from below, which could be... Yeah, I, there's no reason not to, right? Like, you, you've got lethal set up anyway. There's no reason to... Uh... I, I, th I, I think it doesn't, it doesn't really happen. matter either way, because you're either dead this turn or you win next turn. Yeah. <laughs> Johnny Stone praying. Peru picks up a frothing berserker. That's not going to do it. 
And after what turned into a very close game, Johnny Stone is going to get the win against the Pirate Warrior. And he prays and that yeah. one win. Look at Game King in the background. Game King was High saying five. they needed one. And the, the reason why that one is important, because it means the lowest that they could finish now in their game difference is minus one. And of course, we already see Taiwan at minus one. We already see Argentina at minus one. But Singapore currently at minus two. So they're putting themselves in a very good position. But now potentially they can continue yeah. this momentum. I mean, that does, that's, that's great. That's one thing. That's a relief mm. that they can get out of the way. But now, Austria are going to want to take the whole series. If I knew Austria, they, they're not going to be happy with one game win. They're going to want to take the whole series. Let's take a look at the next game. It's going to be Game King versus Uchicha Sasuke with another Mage Mirror match. Another Mage Mirror. And as I've said, it's my favorite matchup at yep. the moment, the Mage Mirror, because the variety of Mage is fantastic. The hybrids that we're starting to see are amazing as well. But I guess while we're waiting, we can talk about some more facts, Dan. Uh, did you know? What a meme. <laughs> in Peru, a popular dish is actually guinea pig. Oh. Yeah, I know, but it is. This culture's a little bit different. Eat different animals. Guinea pig, of course, in uh, in England, very popular as a pet. But so no. cute. I know, yeah, it's a popular dish. On the other side, for Austria, uh, they invented the likes of the sewing machine, the digital clock. Uh, and one of my favorite desserts, the apple strudel, was actually invented in Austria. So. Nice. You're learning a lot during the Hearthstone Global. I am learning a lot. You're going to become one of the most cultured people in esports. Mm, I don't know about that. I know a lot of people are questioning my facts already, and they're saying, ah, do, is that true? Uh, now, excuse me, sir. I'm from Peru. Yeah, well. And we did not create the strudel. No, Peru didn't create the strudel. Austria did, so. See, I'm not letting like anything. See, if Peru came and said that, then I wouldn't be very happy. So. <laughs> At least it will be an Austrian man saying it. Next matchup then, Mage versus Mage. And the reason why I said Who's I like so Dan? much. Mage or Mage? Uh, it depends what Mage it is. I mean, if we've got Discover Mage versus Freeze Mage, then of course Discover Mage is usually favored. But now we're starting to see the introduction of extra cards that aren't typically seen in certain Mage decks. Freeze Mage now has Medivh in it here and there. Discover Mage now is putting Crystal Runners in there, and it's becoming oh, a hybrid with Secret The crossover mage. is just too much. Like, at what point do you see a, a deck list now and say, okay, I'm pretty confident that's a Freeze Mage, and that's a Discover There's going to be one card difference soon. I mean, you can't see it from Mulligan, that's the thing. Like, if, if you laid out a deck list, you should be able to tell, but then it's you're at the point of what do you start calling it? Yeah. Because if it's got Crystal Runners and it's got Secrets, but it's also got the Discover mechanics as well, is it Discover or is it Secret? Freeze Medivh Mage and Runner Discover Mage. Runner Discover. I like it. It's got a ring to it, right? It does have a weird ring to it. Run a discover. Yeah, but it's it was George C's list. Oh, I've mentioned George C like five times All today. All right, George C fanboy. And it boy. makes me look like a massive fanboy. He's a big UK player, but he took a Freeze Mage list to Legend recently. I think it was a few days ago. He put it on social media, and it had Medivh in it. It had two Firelands portals in it, but it didn't have the Mana Worms. Yeah, well, I think that's well the, main the Medivh and the Finance Portals are the huge synergy, right? They're the huge, that's the huge game-swinging play. You play Medivh, next turn you play Finance Portal, you possibly still have Medivh on the board, you end up with a 7-drop and a 5-drop. You can do some crazy things there, so it, it makes sense. It's weird that he's taking a deck that historically has not been interested at all in board control and put in a board control win condition, I guess, instead of Antonidas. But hey, it worked for him. It, it did work for him. Is it going to work for anyone else? As we oh. go into game three. We're not going to find out this game as there's two Mana Worms right in front of us. Two Mana Worms going for that early game. And Cabal Courier, something that has fallen out of favor in Mage. It's kind of being discarded for other more important cards, what people have seen. However, Peru are still holding strong to a more traditional Discover Mage list from what it would look like. For Austria, they've got that early start that they needed. But also, Volcanic Potion is usually a great tool against aggro. Do you need it if you've got a Mana Worm? It's not, so, no. it's not so good in the mirror, is it? Now, Alex Straza pickup is pretty good too. Medivh pickup strong. Yeah, Austria deciding to keep Medivh there in their mulligan. Sure. I mean, you play it on turn eight, and then you just have control of the board for the next few turns. And of course, it is quite often that Discover Mage will run something like Gluttonous Ooze. Sometimes they run Harrison Jones. If you can get Medivh out on eight and just hope that they have not drawn it in eight turns, then you put yourself in a better position, of course. They're drawing it quite late on where they would have had the chance to draw their own Gluttonous Ooze. Yeah, that, that's that's one of the things. One of the ways to beat a card is just play the, the card that it counters before it's been drawn. Peru, pretty nice start though. Gets a Frostbolt, Austria's Mana Worm. Get the, uh, get the buff and then the hit in here. Curving into Cabell Curry next turn. 
Yeah, that volcanic push would have been pretty good right about now. <laughs> but there we go. Frost oh, wow. Bowl will be even better. And a little giggle as well. Taste from, of uh, your own medicine, right? Yeah. Uh, but how often do you see Mana Worm into Frost Bowl? I mean, that's another one of the things I need to find out the statistics for, because it is ridiculous. <laughs> Let's see what Cabal Courier can grab right now. Then Mind Blast and Counterspell. Actually, both very interesting. I think Counterspell is the natural pickup here. Uh, you want to be able to eliminate a important spell from your opponent. Uh, taking away an ice block from your opponent could be massive. Even just a fireball being able to stop a little bit of damage coming through. They don't play it just yet. They want to wait until the coin has been used up. Of that's, course. That's vital. We've seen some huge hiccups in the Hearthstone Global Games before where count where coins have been counterspelled and a hiccup where the coin could have been counterspelled but didn't play around it. So something vital was counterspelled instead. So there's some there's some things, quite basic things, that the teams need to keep thinking about and keep track of. Importantly for Peru is they still do have that little bit of board presence there. At the moment, there isn't a real answer from Game King in Austria. He could just play an Archaeologist of his own to try and answer the board, or he could start looking for some answers via Primordial Glyph. Uh, Forbidden Flame, Primordial Glyph, and Flame Geyser are the picks here. I think it's going to be a pretty quick Primordial Glyph pickup myself. So, ah, Flame Geyser's okay here, actually. You can deal with the Cabell Courier with it. Gl okay. Yeah, I like it. Combined with the Archaeologist, you then are just evening up this board. It's funny because Flame Gazer is, is is considered one of the uh, one of the worst picks you can get from Primordial Glyph. No one's running Elemental Mage at the, at the moment, anyway. Oh god! So, give it time. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't put it past Mage. It can do anything at the moment. Mage can do anything indeed. Ice Block plus Medivh's Valley looks like a very nice swingy turn here. Uchijasaki keeping hold of that counter spell until after the coin's been used. As far as Game King's concerned, this could be a counter spell, so he might use the coin before another spell to play around it, and then therefore not have it to play around the actual counter spell later on. Yeah, see, I think if he had a better turn, like a turn, something he could play that was good on turn six, he may test for it with the coin. However, I don't think you really need to at this point. I wonder. How scared are you of counter spell? I mean, he knows that the ice block was actually in the deck. I'm pretty scared of Counter Spell Dam. They always hit my Pyroblasts for some reason. He's testing for Mirror Entity first, it would seem. And it looks... Oh, yeah, okay. gonna lose some card draw here. Oh, no, we're no, not gonna not lose going some card to, draw, to, but <laughs> If, of course, it was a Counter Spell, he would've. That was risky, but it paid off. Yeah, I think the, it's a risk worth taking. If you've assessed your opponent's deck well enough, you can judge that maybe a Counter Spell isn't in there, but... I think at this early stage, it is a little bit of a risk to take, but think, a risk worth taking. I think against most Discover Mages now, I expect Counterspell rather than Ice Barrier, so it was a risk. Ultimately, I guess Game King didn't mind if he lost a bit of card draw. Yeah. He's got an Ice Block. He's got a great set of turns going into turn eight. So the, um, the rewards outweighed the risk. Now Game King can coin into Firelands Portal if he would like. But there is this board that Peru is starting to build up. And that's going to be a little bit of a, a, a worry, because this chip damage coming through is, is very important. Oh, hey! Yeah, well, that's that volcanic that. potion. Yeah, that's a volcanic potion we could talk about that can deal with all this chip damage coming through. Pretty much the exact answer that Austria needed, just to slow things down a bit. It looks like, based on the hands, Austria win this game at around turn 11, turn 12, something like that. So it's just important for them that they get there without having to fear some crazy lethal with Eater of Secrets or whatever. They want to keep their health as high as possible. That Volcanic Potion ended up being a vital part of doing so. And now Chichasaski got three different secrets in his hand, two of which I'm sure are going to come down with this Mana Worm. Well, I mean, you said don't play Counterspell until the coins come out. So the, but Oh, he's already played an Ice Block, though. Ugh. But I feel like you might want to because this is turn seven coming up. Are you worried about coin into Medivh? I mean, I am because I can see it, of course. It looks like Peru aren't wanting to give I away the coin. I still think you feel bad about that if it gets counterspelled, though, because then Austria go, okay, whatever, Firelands Portal, then Medivh. Like, they still have a good sequence of turns. And now counterspell can come down and will hit something. Yep, they were testing for that counterspell in case that second one was a counterspell, as you said, because it does pop up and discover mage. But now they could just drop Medivh here. I don't think they feel the need to play around Mirror Entity. That's not a card that you it already, see yeah, in this that's true. deck. It's not, but it does turn up. But I think if they had seen that the secret was played by 
something that was discovered, then maybe they would have been a little bit more hesitant, but of course they just saw it came out of the deck instead. Fireball coming out is a good response to Medivh, but you may just use this Meteor instead, to be it, honest. It's so tricky because Meteor might be invaluable over the next few turns to deal with a wider board. Fireball, the face plus counter spell, you're developing 10 damage. Austria haven't put a secret on the board yet. Maybe that's something you consider. You've got Pyroblast ready to go in a few turns. I don't like ignoring Medivh though, but I guess you do have an Ice Barrier up, so you're like, well, we can take seven, and then we can think about dealing with it next turn. If he builds a board, then we've got Meteor to follow up. Uh, Peru may decide it's just do or die time, you know? So they might, they might decide, okay, well, we, we, we're not gonna win the long game. Our hand is not built to win the long game. We need to win over the next few turns. We've got two ice blocks, so we've got time to deal this chip damage. There's the counter spell. Fireball, go face, come on. There we go, all right. I like this a lot. Yeah, I like it as well, getting the party started. Medivh is typically the one that's good at getting the party started, but this time, this Mana Worm is doing the job. Counterspell going to hit Fireball by the looks of things, so what does Game King actually end up doing to clear up the Mana Worm? Probably using Medivh and then just Ice Blocking here, because you don't feel too safe at 10 health. No. No, you're right. The Mana Worm does need to be dealt with. Is Polymorph maybe? Ah. Uh, no. Ice block is just so important. Nice, nice little 2-2. Two -two. Three mana 2-2. Two -two. Solid stat line there. One of the worst to actually get. So Peru have put themselves in a position where they can start searching for more damage. They kept that Meteor back for this particular instance if Game King had tried to build up a board. Volcanic Potion actually will deal with it even better. You don't need to use that okay. Meteor. So on one hand, Uchijasaki has loads of time. He's still got 30 health. He's got two Ice Blocks. Game King's on 10. He can start popping Ice Blocks very soon, especially if he wants to use the Pirate Blast. On the other hand, Game King has Alexstrasza, which can be used defensively uh, in a very powerful way this game. Or it could just be used this turn offensively, but I think I like playing a safer Excuse game here if I'm, if I'm Team Austria. Yeah, I like trying to build up a board here. Yeah. Then you but play the cool. Alexstrasza when the Ice Block gets popped or something. Now, it isn't quite a board that can be dealt with with Meteor because of the end up the placement that has ended up. However, Frostbolt does allow for it to be dealt with if they are really scared now, Peru. What's weird is that I'm considering the potential of Yuchisha Sasuke just pyroblasting Game King in the face. It would mean the Ice Block gets popped at 10, but it would also render the Alexstrasza kind of useless. I wonder. If Peru could somehow get a second Pyroblast. I think both Primordial Glyphs have been used, though. That's the problem. But imagine he Pyroblast this turn and then drew Glyph and got another Pyroblast and just won the game. You may see Alex Raza come out defensively in that situation, putting an 8-8 on the board and putting yourself I, up to 15. I guess just the second Ice Block would be fine in that scenario. He's actually going to do it, though. Wow. I don't really have much other option. They're playing too slow a game if they were to try and answer this board. So they are just going to take the... The risk oh, of popping yeah. the block first. Firelands Portal plus Ice Block is just so strong this turn. Yeah, of course you Firelands Portal first to get most value out of Atish. Yep. Chichisaski still got some time, but they really need to pick up burn damage as oh, and a lot of it really fast. Yeah, what can Peru find? Oh, oh, oh dear. Baby. <laughs> Game King looks pretty happy about that. Oh, I'm not really surprised. Uh, one of the best drops he could have got, to be honest. Jaina on the bottom there representing Peru doesn't look so happy. Uh, oh, there is a glyph! <laughs> yeah, but I mean, even glyph into Pyroblast. It doesn't kill an ice block. Oh, he gets uh, it as well! It, I mean, it, it does kill an ice block. It pops an ice block. Yeah, yeah, yeah but it doesn't kill you past the ice block, I guess is what I meant. Now, Chichisaski just needs to somehow get a third glyph or a second Pyroblast. Or a, a fireball off the top. Would be enough. That's true. Ah, that's true. So, and there's still another ice block for Peru as well. So they have two draws at it. Now, one one fireball's already been used for definite with the mana worm earlier. 
I'm pretty sure Game King just plays Alex here. You 100% play Alex here. And then that puts you in a really good range, and then suddenly Fireball isn't going to they help. Need Fireball, they need double Fireball and Frostbolt to win at 15. And as I just said, one of the Fireballs is gone. Both Glyphs have been used, uh, and no, neither of those cards remain in Uchicha Sasuke's hand. This should be 100% safe from Game King. Uh, Firelands Portal could have changed it. You could have Firelands Portal got a Leroy, then played Ice Block and being able to put 11 damage to face, take them up to 4, and then follow up the following turn with Frostball Ping. However, no Firelands Portal available for Peru, and this looks like is going to be game three going to Austria and then taking a 2-1 lead. And two is that magic number that I was talking about, Dan. It does guarantee them through to the last 16. It does. Very vital victory. Probably not enough for them. They're going to want to get the three wins. They're going to want to take the series. But here... Yeah, okay. Peru just playing on. Going to drop the ice block, hoping there's some way. Well, so, okay, they can do it backwards to the way I've just said. Uh -huh. Right? They can now do this damage. If they draw Firelands Portal next turn, they can okay. still get Firelands Portal into Leroy. Yep. So, that's their only out. Doesn't really matter what Austria draw at this point. I don't think there's anything in there. Well, unless they run a leader of secrets. I don't think there's anything else in their deck to make this win any easier for them. I don't think we've seen any two of secrets yet today. No, we haven't seen them pop up as much as we probably thought we were going to. Now, Game King's. He's trying to think is there any way I can delay this from uh, anything from happening? No Firelands Portal, so no out available for Peru. So we will probably see the Concede, or at least the Honorable Ping to the face, which just happens so often in the Mage Mirror. Austria get that second win. I said it was a really important win. It does guarantee them through, even if they were to lose 3-2 because of their tiebreakers. But they still have another game, or potentially another two games. They want to try and win this one. Try and go through whilst high sailing. Big thumbs up from Game King there. Just as they claim their victory, Wife Coach getting ready to, to play her game. I, I love seeing them win, Dan. I love it. I, I, I can feel your, your love for the feel win. It. Yeah, like it's slightly disconcerting, but I'm enjoying it anyway. It's uh, thoroughly pleasant from you that I'm Dan as <laughs> game four is going to be Wife Coach versus Nandu, and it's going to be Warrior versus the well, it looks like Wife Coach may be back on the Pirate Warrior then. Yeah, first we've seen few weeks, a few times. First we? few weeks, and a lot of stage one, we saw Wife Coach on the Pirate Warrior. I think she was playing the Evolve Shaman for the last few weeks. Yeah, she played switch, it last week. Switch back to the Warrior. Um, she's very, very good on the deck. Yeah, it's, she's good at piloting, piloting aggro decks, and of course, you've got some fantastic players behind you as well. As you can now see the players there on your screen who are going to be piloting the decks, and Nandi once again. Yeah. Up. Meanwhile, I guess I can, you know, provide a couple more facts if you really want, Dan. Do you want more I, facts? I really, really, really want more facts, Dan. Okay, it sounds like he's keen for it, at least. I uh, really want them. Austria supposedly have the biggest waterfall in Europe. And, and do you know how, how big it is? 380 meters. I'm glad you asked. You just know everything. I do, yeah, and it, so it's, it's weird because in the right. This comes back. Do you remember yesterday when we were talking about Wales and we were saying like I, I went to a waterfall in Wales and I thought that that was the biggest waterfall in Europe, but apparently not. Google told me otherwise. That's where I get my facts. If you were wondering, Google uh, for Peru. Did you know there are 10 million alpacas in the world? Three quarters of those are in Peru. Wow, 750,000. Exactly. 10 million. Oh. 10 million, not 1 million, 10 million. There we go, this is a Hearthstone caster <laughs> doing math <laughs> for everyone at home. But yeah, that's a lot of alpacas, but regardless, we move on now I to- I thought you said 1 million no, no. for some reason. No, no, I didn't, oh, but dear. it's okay. You can't track back anymore. It's not like anyone can watch VODs or anything. I think we're about ready, Warrior versus Priest. We've had a lot of Warrior versus Priest in the global games, but it's always the age old question of what Warrior and what Priest. And just as Dan predicted, Pirate Warrior is going to be the choice for Wife Coach, but it is going to be the Dragon Priest for Nandi. Just be glad it's your birthday. Why? I, I didn't mess <laughs> up anything there. <laughs> yeah, um, should be a pretty good matchup from Wife Coach. Dragon Priest lost a lot of their early game with Ungoro. Priest of the Feast is a card that's able to single-handedly win 
the priest the game with cards like Power Word Shield, Shadow Visions, etc. later on. But Peru have to get there, and Wife Coach and Team Austria are not going to make that easy. Well, this is the thing. Do you keep Priest of the Feast in your mulligan? It's got to be tempting. It is tempting, but you also want to try to find something that can also battle against the early game as well. So Radiant Elemental with Power Word Shield is very strong on turn, especially with two of them. Say Nandeep picks up Radiant Elemental on turn two, or even turn one now. Coins out, plays both Powered Shields. How does Wife Coach ever get the board back off of him? As it happens, there is no Radiant Elemental. Priest of the Feast comes back, though. So that card is still there, ready to be impactful. I wouldn't be too surprised if Wife Coach ends up casting Spellbreaker on Priest of the Feast uh, against the Priest. Yeah, it's certainly something that we might see. And the option there not to actually attack as well. Huh. I'm a taunt warrior, I promise. Yeah. I think you just save in case you get some sort of upgrade, potentially. You don't need to push the three damage straight away to face. Also, you might need to use the the weapon to just bash off a minion, to be honest. You might want to take uh, take Radiant Elemental off the off the board. And Nandeep doing the classic priest thing of healing his opponent's face. There's no the light shall burn you, though. I'm sure that's part of part of what you're supposed to do there. Well, you have to do that as a priest. You have to emote at the same time. I'm pretty sure that's... that's... I think that's what everyone does against me on ladder. I'm pretty anyway. sure that's an unwritten rule. Yeah, if you're going to heal your opponent's face, then it's always followed by the light shall burn you. So, does Wife Coach drop the frothing berserker here? It's very weak to Shadow Word Pain. Mm, very I mean, strong against everything Peru have in their hand, though. Well, you could just push seven damage now with Heroic Strike, as well as a Dread Corsair. Okay. What you don't now? need to. You could just play Dread Cazare and you could you could hero power, you could armor up. There is no need to push the extra damage. Not just yet. You may need that heroic strike to deal with something a little bit later, like a priest of the feast, for example. Yeah, heroic strike is very good with the surprise factor as well. You can definitely make the argument that as long as you fit the four damage in, it doesn't, it doesn't matter when you do it. But Life Coach agrees with you, may need it for trading later, and as I said, it's it's good for a surprise lethal. Nandeep's hand is just not coming together. No, no dragon to, uh, of course, initiate the operative to be able to dive into the opposition deck and find something. Instead, you're just going to have to play the Talon Priest here. And you don't want to use the coin to make the Talon Priest any bigger because you really you want to save the coin for your Priest of the Feast. Is it tempting to do that regardless? You end up with a 3-6. It would mean wife, catch, wife, wife Coach has to hit in her Fiery War Axe and her Corsair. Hmm. I don't like it. No, because then, wait but, because you can make your Priest of the Feast a 3-8 a instead. I'm considering it because there's the additional advantage of next turn. If this survives, then you play Cabal Talon Priest. Obviously, Nandeep decided, nope, the Priest of the Feast is too important. Yeah, he can make that a 3-8. Corsair. I mean, that oh, deals boy. with the 3-4 pretty nicely. Now he'll regret not coining out the power word shield. Will he? I don't know. Probably not. Yeah, I mean, I guess, yeah, there are arguments to it. However, Priest of the Feast into coin into what power word shield is at least going to bump your health up a little bit and put something on the board that they need to deal with. Spellbreaker is a good way to deal with it as well. And you're going to be thinking, what other targets am I going to be focusing on on Spellbreaker? Mm -hmm. Are there any taunts that I'm really going to be seeing here. Probably not. No, Priest of the Feast just flat out seems like the best target in this deck. Now there's no Twilight Guardian, there's no Wormrest Agent. Priest, uh, very much lacking good taunts. Priest of the Feast is the next best thing. In fact, you can argue it's much better than a taunt. The amount you can heal is actually much more than just the six that it would taunt. Um, okay, so... Wife Coach opting to play the Frothing Berserker, of course, playing it after they hit to make sure that it is just a 4-4 rather than a 5-4. And, and why does she want it to be a 4-4, Dan? Well, Dan. <laughs> yes, Dan? <laughs> I'm not going to say it. Okay. Because I think everyone knows Priest can, of course, deal with anything that is 3 or 5. Though, as we four. can see, Peru's hand is not set up to deal with anything that has 5 attack or anything that has 3 attack. There's no Shadowwood Pain or Death present. So, Wife Coach not actually going to be rewarded for making that play in this instance. Still very much seems like it was the correct way to go, though. Uh, coining out a Draconid Operative is something I'd consider here. I know I know you really, really want to save that coin for Priest of the Feast. I don't blame you, Dan. But 
Putting the big body of the operative on the board might be something that Undeep has to consider anyway. At this point, I kind of want to save that coin for Dragonfire Potion, to be honest. I'm getting sure. scared of this board. Uh, so I may be so, tempted now to Talon Priest into Power World yeah. Shield. Right. Okay. Yep, I can get behind that play. Looks like that's the one that Peru are going to make. And you're right, Dragonfire Potion may be just the reset that Peru needs next turn. Then follow that up with Priest of the Feast and Powered Shield. Arcanite Reaper, though. Austria. Austria succeeding to pick up all of the weapons that they need, unlike the Pirate Warrior that we saw earlier from Kishtar, which had to just upgrade twice on nothing. Wife Coach getting handed it on a silver platter. Yeah, so, how, like, how worried are you about this Talent Priest then? You know that there's a potential next turn to be a coin into Dragonfire Potion. So, in that case, do you want to be trading anything? The answer's probably no. So, you could Fiery War Axe into Heroic Strike yeah. if you want to get rid of the 3 6. I like that because if there is a Dragonfire Potion, you then just play Naga Corsair. You're putting a 5 4 back on the board, and uh, you've still got the, the Fiery War Axe that's been upgraded. Wife Coach gonna steal as much damage as she possibly can. Hold on, hold on a second. Is this just lethal next turn? Not quite. Naga Corsair presses for a stroke is only yeah, 10. You're right. It's, it's close though. I, I mean, putting uh, a priest down to one is good, but that is a priest that does have Priest of the Feast as well. I think the natural play here is coin into Dragonfire Potion. But any, you are in Leroy range. Is there any way that Nandi can get away with not playing Dragonfire Potion this turn? That's what we need to consider. Priest of the Feast plus coin plus powered shield heals for six. It's just not enough. If he had had a shadow of death and a little bit more mana than maybe. Yeah. But uh, no, this you have to just do this. And now Leroy off the top would be enough. That's so Raider isn't not going there, to though. do it. So 10 damage in Wife Coach's hat. Well, available to Wife Coach right now. Heroic Strike plus Naga Corsair. Plus, it does develop a 5 4 onto the board. It which, does indeed. Which Nandi won't be able to deal with because he's going to be playing Priest of the Feast, Powered Shield, and he still doesn't have a death. Yeah, and I don't think you need to use the Heroic Strike. Because nope. you have the Spellbreaker in hand as well, you're not desperate to get this damage through this second. Instead, you just put big, beef, big beefy minions on the board. And now for Peru, their only option is Priest of the Feast into Power Word Shield here. That puts them back up to eight. That's not enough. And that's not enough because they can, yes, they can trade into the eight three. They need to find another spell here. They do, but it's not a spell you can play. So that is going to be enough damage from hand, as well as the five on board, that Wife Coach is going to be able to take the victory. Austria can finish the game off, and it does mean they finish in their group two and one. So they are actually going to be able to leap over Greece, leap over Ukraine, and all three of them will be qualifying at two and one. One of them will qualify as a third place finisher. But they're all guaranteed, and they're very happy about it as they always are when they get their wins, enjoying their moment very much. Hopefully, we'll get to have a chat with them in a minute and, uh, and share in their victory with them. Fantastic win, very quick series, but Wife Coach, once again, showing she really does know how to pilot that Pirate Warrior. And I believe if my calculations are correct, they actually win their group as well. A group that has Greece in, that has Ukraine. Let's have a look at all the classes that were played in this match. Uh, it was a good start from Peru. Maybe a little bit of nerves coming through from Austria when they lost that first game, but then Johnny Stone was able to resettle those nerves, and Game King and Wife Coach came in to clean it up. Yeah, they got the sweep. I, I mean, a lot of people look at Austria like one of the underdog teams. When you actually look at the players, Wife Coach, Game King, Johnny Stone, Ziggentag, they've all got their achievements. Um, several of them stream, you know. These guys are well known in the international community. They are very well known. Well, let's have a chat to uh, Austria and see how they're feeling. Hi, guys. I mean, you actually win your group uh, now because of that result. You must be pretty happy about that. Sounds it. I'm also happy. How are you feeling? Well. Great. Sounds like I'm chatting to a Skype robot. <laughs> mm. I agree. Seems like Austria are thrilled with their win, and we're not actually going to be able to chat to them, <laughs> did, you, did you enjoy that chat, Dad? I did. One of the best interviews I've ever had in my career, <laughs> to be honest. A nice birthday interview just that, for me. That may have even topped when we chatted to Calento. I mean, that one was also one that, uh, that had me 
thriving with pleasure. But now let's have a look at some of the replays from the series. Uh, we do apologize that we weren't able to have a chat with Austria there, unfortunately. It does seem like we had some technical difficulties. Cycling back to game one then. It seems like so long ago now, but that shadow step and the backstab was able to get Peru an early victory. It was a fantastic win there by Peru. They spotted it. Uh, they got the shot, and that's what Shadow Step does. It's like it acts like an extra little innovate in this position. It allows you to cheat the mana. Yeah, okay, you could complete the quest by playing the other flame element, but why do that when you can drop the one that's already there for free? Uh, dirty win there, but very well deserved. Well deserved indeed, and then Austria, of course, evened it up, and we got back into the uh, Mage Mirror, which seems to be a very common, uh, a common theme that we're actually seeing, not just today, but over the past couple of days of Global Games. And Mage in a great spot at the moment, but unfortunately for Peru, they were able to pop two ice blocks, but it wasn't enough because they couldn't find any more damage after doing so. <laughs> and tonight is sitting there, uh, just watching over the other, min the menagerie of minions that appeared on the board. Not quite being relevant himself, but still a very exciting pickup for Austria to get from the Atiesh. Yeah, just, uh, it, was a, it was a hard game, a hard fought game for Peru. They it were was. looking in a decent position, but then Austria, by keeping that Medivh early on, really paid off for them. So good mulliganing from them. Yeah, it was surprising and to me they didn't even, well, until later on, they didn't even need the Alexstrasza. Mm -hmm. like, it was the Medivh on eight was the vital part of why they won that game. Vital part. And we already saw celebrations when they'd won two games because they knew that they would be able to get through as third place finishers. But then Wife Coach, as she done so many times in the global games, piloting the aggro deck very successfully, and it's a clean sweep. It allows Austria to move forward as the winners of their group. Yeah, I mean, why get a third place finish when you can win the group, right? Mm, exactly. Let's have a look and see how the group did finish off. Austria up there at the top. It means Ukraine fall to third, but they still go through as third place finishers with two one, so they won't be too unhappy about that, Dan. No, Ukraine, everyone would expect them to get through, and, and they did get through because of the, the top four third place finishers rule. I'm sure everything's very, everyone's very happy with that watching back home, some of their favorite players on the Ukraine team, but some of my favorite team players on the uh, Austria team as well. And hey. hopefully we're now hey, going to have a chat with them. Hi guys, can you hear us this time? Hi, yes. Hey. Hi. We're finally there. I mean, you actually win your group now, what is going through your guys' heads? Oh, it's just great. As expected. <laughs> As expected. <laughs> As expected. <laughs> I like the confidence. Is that confidence going to move forward to the last 16 for you lot? Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> we, we can achieve anything. Like, um, in any game against any opponent, we feel confident that we can, with, like, we, we can beat them, of course. <laughs> that is really great to hear. Now, now, we talk a lot, or I talk a lot while we're casting you guys, about how much I enjoy watching you win and celebrate and high-five each other. <laughs> uh, is, that a, is that a big part of the Hearthstone Global Games for you? Yeah. <laughs> well, for me, it is, at least, I guess. It just feels so much better if you, we are together as four and can play together and mm. enjoy the victory together, especially if you're winning. <laughs> Even if you're losing, that's fine. Winning yeah. is fun. It's just uh, <laughs> a, a good feeling. It's a uh, team spirit feeling. And when you are losing, do you do you find that you're able to motivate each other to, to not tilt and calm each other down? And, and and does it help you when you're losing as well? Definitely, yeah. And we we can carry see it together. Yeah, we carry can see the that wins and play. carry the losses. We're usually pretty analytical. Like we will talk about the plays and then see if we maybe did some mistakes and we can improve on it in the future. We, we don't really um, like get down or yeah, feel like we, we, unlucky or we something. We focus on the next game. <laughs> Yeah, each player. Good. Always focusing on the next game. That's uh, something that maybe some other teams might be able to focus on as well. Congratulations again, guys. Best of luck in the last Thank 16. You. Thank you. See you. Bye. See you later. Uh, really good performance from Austria, yeah. and of course, very happy. But we still have plenty more action in the Hearthstone Global Games. Uh, next up, uh, I've lost the actual matchup. My page is blown over, but we will have more. I think it's going to be Bulgaria versus Mexico. So we'll be back very shortly for that one. We're almost there. Quiet down, everyone. This is not like any of our previous expeditions. This will be far more ambitious. 
We're stepping into a land of primordial wonder. Infused with astonishing elemental energies. The plant life here holds very unusual properties. So don't touch anything. And while you may be excited to see the local fauna, you might want to make sure they don't see you. Because their powers of adaptation are devastating. Make no mistake, we will be tested at every turn. But if we stay on our guard, we might just survive. Now then, are you ready? Then let's journey into Ongoro Crater.